that. Okay. So I should be live now. Uh, if not, even if out of focus. Uh, right. Cool. Right. So just let me turn this down. Right. See if that helps. Right. Hi, everybody. Uh, apologize for being out of focus. I don't know why. Right. Okay. I'm not bothered about that for the time being. Right. So. Need to get here so that I can chat. Put that there. Right. So, um, just let me know if there's uh, if there's anything wrong while I get my notes. Right, so it's quite a uh, quite an impromptu uh, video. Uh, the reason being, uh, today I saw uh, today I saw a post from Home Assistant saying that they had released uh, zero point seven seven, which is a fantastic step forward in my opinion. It offers uh, basically a, a huge step forward in uh, in security. I'll okay, cheers. Um, now I'm going to try and show you. Uh, I'm going to try and give you a brief example of how it works, how to set it up. Now, if you click, there should be a uh, an information thing. Uh, you know the uh, the little information icon in the top right hand corner. And uh, that links, or one of the links in there is to a video that uh, has uh, a video that Home Assistant posted earlier, which is uh, another YouTube video just showing uh, the egg, showing the example, uh, showing Paulus and how he uh, did it and uh, created the two factor authentication, multi factor authentication. So, I'm just going to alter this because I'm I'm hearing myself, which is not good. Uh, right, audio. Uh, bah, bah, Right. Okay. So you you should still be able to hear me. Uh, let me know if that drops out. Yeah. So uh, I've already set mine up, but what I have done is I have uh, recorded it on my Android device and on uh, my uh, and on the uh, has dot io uh, screen, the web interface. I've recorded that side of it as well. Now, I did have a little bit of trouble because uh, the the utility I use for two factor authentication is from LastPass uh, and it is called, uh, I think it may just be called Authenticator. Just give me a second. While I'm doing that, if uh, you're wondering why I'm doing this video laid down on a bed, uh, then if you click uh, again, a click in the uh, information. Oh yes, <laughs> see Brown, why are you laying down? I'm lazy. Um, no, if you if you click in the the top right hand uh, information, there's a link to the first live stream that I did uh, last week, 
and that is basically just <laughs> to that video quality is terrible uh, it's basically just telling you all uh, about about me and why uh, why I'm doing these videos uh, laid down uh, the fact that I'm disabled uh, and so I I can't stand up for long and uh, it it is terrible isn't it uh, and it stopped me doing videos for basically uh, a few months but I digress uh, I hope that answers your question Brian uh, just let me try and get up and give this camera a wipe see if that helps you're going to see some yellow <sighs> right where was I uh, the focus is still terrible uh, you wouldn't believe that I actually set this up earlier right it'll do so where's my phone yeah my phone's here yes so i use yes uh, i use uh, an app from uh, lastpass and it is called authenticator exactly the same as uh, google's with the looks of it uh, and i use authentic uh, lastpass authenticator because i use lastpass and i just uh, prefer it to uh, cheers Brian. <laughs> Uh, I just prefer it to uh, to Google Authenticator. Now the issue that I had is um, LastPass was a uh, a bit more security conscious, uh, a bit more security conscious than Google. So when I tried recording the screen uh, with all the uh, the instru with with the example, it wouldn't record. Um, and so my plan was to record the uh, record the screen, record LastPass authentic uh, authenticator uh, process, and basically blur out everything else except Home Assistant. Uh, so I basically had to scrap that idea, and so it's a bit of a blessing in disguise because the uh, the video shows. I'm just going to. Uh, load it up uh, the video shows uh, me installing Google authentic uh, authenticator if you haven't got that installed um, so if you haven't got it installed it's nice and easy to install it's uh, available from the the Play Store same as um, most Google things are um, it's just a, a simple install once it is installed then uh, it's just a case of adding uh, the the utilities, the apps, whatever you want to, uh, whatever you, whatever you want to add. Right. So let's have a look. It should be uh, this one. Second. Okay. Right, so uh, duplicate that. As you can tell, I'm still not uh, still not the best at uh, live streaming. Uh, this is only my my what third, so. Uh, it's not too bad right and what I want to do is play that no it's not working right so um, yep so what you need to do is go into Google Play uh, do a search for um, Google authenticator or uh, two-factor authentication something like that and um, 
there isn't just Google and um, there isn't just Google and LastPass. There are uh, quite a few of these, and the way it works, I will get this uh, file up. Right. So the way it works is it um, it basically allows you to. Seconds. Uh, transform. Right, let's put it over here. Uh, right, so as you can see from my makeshift graphics. I'm uh, recording video at the minute, so I can see how I'm doing this. You're doing more, isn't it? Uh, I'm just recording this screen, what I'm doing. Uh, so, once it's installed, well. you then you need the to set up there, uh, the mm -hmm. app or web page or whatever it is that, yeah, that, uh, that you need the multi factor yeah. authentication for. Uh, so, in this case, it is obviously uh, Home Assistant. Now, as you can see here, uh, I mean, I'm quite lucky. I've already got two-factor, uh, well, multi-factor authentication turned on on quite a few of my accounts, uh, so I could basically just skip quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of this, no. uh, and it didn't really uh, affect me. Uh, so. So once it gets to uh, the bit where you need to, uh, as you can see here, you've got two options. You can either enter a, a key or you can scan a barcode. Uh, so if I now change, change this file. It is I'm sure I could hear my wife and my child. Uh, I don't know why. Right, so... Right, so, yep, so as you can see, um, I can't rewind this, but... Um, what it is doing is, uh, once you do that, it gives you a, a code, and it also gives you a, well, it gives you a barcode, and it also, uh, a QR code, and a, just a normal uh, ASCII uh, string. And you can use either of those. And uh, what you do is, if you, uh, if you select, on the other screen, on your uh, device, if you select, uh, scan scan a barcode then uh, you obviously scan the qr code and from there uh, it knows what you're what you're wanting to do what you're wanting to add um, again alternatively uh, you can do it that way right so what it's uh, just done there is it's a i didn't have time to edit these together unfortunately uh, i really should have uh, waited and done this tomorrow however I'm just so uh, I was just quite happy that uh, the that it had, uh, that it had come out uh, basically I had a uh, a few issues with home assistant and um, these have solved it so 
if I do this. Move this across here. All right, so. All right, so as you can see, it, uh, it adds the account and it gives you uh, a list of accounts that you have. Uh, you have a account down timer on the right, right hand side and every, I'm not sure how often, uh, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, something like that. Uh, it changes the uh, the six figure uh, six digit character uh, and if you remember from the uh, from the last screen so if you remember from the last screen what it does is it um, you enter that code and then it just grants you access now if you've been uh, if you've been keeping it with home assistant you you may have noticed that uh, when you log in, you get an option to uh, to save the login. Now that uh, that happens in case you want to save your. Uh, so, for example, if you're on your computer, you don't want to enter a six-digit character every time. You can use your multi-factor authentication to log into your computer and then save login, and you won't ha you won't have to use the multi-factor authentication. Uh, basically every time it will save that device if you like now if I take a look at uh, if I take a look at mine the way that you get to this is if you so I've, I've done it the I've done it the wrong way around um, so what will happen is when you upgrade to uh, version uh, zero decimal seven seven, and then when you restart or when it uh, when Home Assistant restarts, um, it will give you uh, it will give you a screen, and that screen will ask you for. Uh, your name, what username you want, and what password you want to use. When you enter, uh, when you enter that information, uh, you'll then move on to the second screen that asks you for either your username and password. And there is also an option to uh, to go back to the old uh, API uh, password and use that instead. Now, the uh, this is an ongoing process. And there are, I understand, uh, there are different modules uh, that will be coming out in st uh, when it comes to multi-factor authentication. So not just the Authenticator app. Now, if you uh, if you want to keep on top of what those are, uh, then by all means uh, follow the Hascasts channel. Uh, I'm going to definitely keep on top and when other modules come out I will uh, do uh, do some better videos and uh, and let everybody know about that because it's something that I uh, something that I feel strongly uh, strongly about because basically the way uh, things have been uh, they haven't been bad but uh, as with any ongoing system things need improving so uh, things need improving and the only way to improve things is um, is to learn by them learn by your mistakes most of the time so if anybody has known your password then if you're using something like uh, duck dns then they can get into your system they can control uh, control your home control your house with this it makes it a lot harder. Now, as the system uh, progresses, uh, I imagine you'll be able to lock down um, more things, and you'll be able to grant access to uh, specific apps, specific uh, devices, same as you, same as you can with uh, 
Facebook and uh, Google and, and things like that. Uh, now, obviously, Home Assistant hasn't got, hasn't got the uh, the budget uh, of those companies, but it is, like I say, it's an ongoing, uh, it is an ongoing process. So you've just got to be patient and uh, I will let you know when whenever things come out. Right, so let me have a look at this. All right, that, that, that. So, yeah, so this, uh, this stream has not gone uh, as I planned. Now, uh, if you want to have a look on the, uh, like I said, if you click in the information in the top right corner, uh, that will take you to, or one of those options will take you to the Home Assistant video. Um, but that is uh, a palace doing it and it is, um, there's no sound on it. It's, um, and it's quite a quick video and it doesn't uh, really show you uh, how you do it on the app side. Um, so after this, what I'll do is I will get the entire process uh, and I will sort of truncate it all um, and get it all sorted into one video explaining it all, which this, uh, which this should have been. Uh, unfortunately, half the day I've been, well, quite a bit of the day, um, I've been trying to stay awake while morphine's been trying to put me to sleep. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not been too easy. But, uh, sorry, but what you, uh, I believe what you can do, if not now, then in the future is you should be able to, uh, also create different users. Uh, now, if I'm wrong, I believe that is a feature that, uh, that will be coming, uh, and that that will be great because you'll be able to uh, sort of allow your kids access um, and then they can just have access to uh, their bedroom things uh, and use the functionality uh, functionality like that now does anybody have any questions that I can uh, try to answer uh, let's have a look Yeah, so does anybody have um, any questions? Uh, maybe not just about this, but about anything. My inside leg measurement, I believe, is 31. Might be 29, I can't remember. But no, just kidding. Um, right, so... Uh, while I'm here, I will give you a little uh, update on, on Hascasts and uh, the way it's going to go. So, at the minute, I'm looking at uh, what series I can start. Um, and I mean series, as in if you think of a, a TV series, it's on uh, at a, a certain time, uh, a certain day, regularly, every week. Now, I'm looking at... Uh, I'm looking at several of those, uh, several, yeah, so I'm looking at um, several of those, several series posting uh, probably uh, two or three times a week, uh, starting in a few weeks. Um, hi, Jolly. Uh, yep, so... So I should be posting uh, a couple of times, uh, two or three times every week to begin with. Uh, my ideal goal will be posting uh, daily, but just to give you, just to give you a few examples of the uh, sort of TV series format uh, that I've got in mind. Uh, so maybe a series on, <clears throat> excuse me, a series on. Uh, home assistant components um, a regular series on reviews for example uh, in the next 
few weeks, I will be uh, reviewing a book. Uh, I can't believe what it is. I, yeah, I believe it's about uh, MQTT and how to how to make it uh, more secure. Uh, because if you're a big fan of channels like this, then you're probably um, a fan of Dr. Z and he uses Tasmota a lot. Um, now, in fact, I think he uses Tasmota when he's asleep. He uses it all the time. Uh, and Tasmota is good, but uh, one of the things that is uh, hard, to do, hard to do on it is uh, secure certificates because it takes up so much room. Now, if you lessened the uh, lessened the firmware, so shrinked, uh, shrunk, uh, shrunk Tasmota down into uh, basically. I'd have to, for me, I would rewrite the uh, rewrite the code in uh, in a format that I need that I don't need all of Tasmota. So it's about. Uh, it's not only about that. It's about um, locking the system, locking the MQT system, MQQ M. QTT system uh, down with an access control list. Uh, now, my MQTT server is already uh, locked down quite well, uh, and the access control list on it is uh, very strict. Uh, every device that uh, every device that I've got has its own uh, username. Uh, its own unique 100 character password um, and it's allowed to post to one topic uh, that's it yeah, so my access control list is very very strict but it shows you how to set that up uh, second channel let's have a look all the lights come on uh, all right, okay, Charlie. Uh, so now then, what do you uh, what do you use for your lights? Uh, are they uh, something like uh, light? Uh, is it light wave? Um, is it uh, American? So is it Z wave? Uh, is it uh, Z-Wave, do you, do you use uh, Sonoffs to control your lights, something like that. I'm, what I'm uh, trying to get at is I'm just trying to figure out what protocol uh, you use. So if it is MQTT, uh, then you can just set the uh, set the retain flag. That might not, no, that won't work. Um, but if I can figure out what I mean, it's not just me, there are other people watching that may be able to help. Uh, so if you can figure out what protocol you're using, um, you can figure out so, uh, how to uh, proceed. Uh, David, yes, I do have uh, CCTV on Home Assistance. Uh, the way I have it set up is I use MotionEye, uh, which is based on Motion. Uh, that is motion the software, not motion the. Uh, right, one second, Charlie. Yep, that is uh, motion the software, uh, not motion the motion. So, yeah, motion I is based on that. It's a, uh, a web interface. And then there is a. Uh, there is a post somewhere on the Home Assistance. Uh, home assistant uh, community forum i believe and it is basically about uh, when motion eye detects uh movement then it pushes an image of that and uh i think it was uh, it may have been home assistant 0 decimal 75 um that introduced the i think it was push image uh, or something like that uh, and when an image gets pushed to it, it will uh, display it basically attacks as uh, a camera. So it will display it like that. And 
that's how I used it. Uh, I've stopped using it at the minute just because I'm uh, running the uh, the streaming software and I wanted to lessen the chance of anything going wrong or grabbing this uh, grabbing too uh, too many system resources. So I I stopped it. Um, but yeah, that's the way I have my CCTV uh, set up. Uh, right back to uh, Charlie. Wi-Fi son off Hue. Uh, right, and QTT as well. Right, quite a quite a, a mixture. So, I, but I, I'm trying to think. But I, I believe there, I believe there is a way that um, you can tell it to uh, when the power comes back on. You can tell it to. Uh, default to a certain state. I just can't think at the moment uh, what that is. Uh, again, I'd have to know. Right, so right, so all the lights keep. So for those that aren't in the chat, I will uh, read Charlie's message out. It says. I have an issue with Home Assistant here in South Texas. It is very hot and the electricity keeps going out and when it comes back on, all the lights come on. Uh, I would like them I would like them to stay off when the electricity comes back. So you're after a default state. No problems, David. Uh, so you're after a, a default state. Now you see uh, you're using Wi-Fi, sun off, and uh, hue. Now, if I let me just get my phone, and I'll have a uh, a quick look through my uh, hue app. I don't believe, um, don't believe there is a way with the hue app to uh, to do it right. So. How what uh, sort of home assistant uh, do you use? Is it uh, has dot io or is it uh, just run on uh, well run on a, a computer? Or how do you use it? Uh, is the I assume the device is set to start back up when the electricity comes back on. Uh, yes, uh, Prathic. Hope I've pronounced that right. Yeah, Prathic. So Prathic says um, uh, use power retain one command on son of console. Has I right? That's what that's what I was initially going to say, uh, Prathic. But uh, then I thought if the um, if the lights are on when the power goes off, then when they come back on, uh, when the power comes back on, the lights will come back on. Um, but if Charlie is definitely wanting the lights to, let me just go back and read it again. Yeah, uh, but if Charlie is definitely wanting uh, the lights to default to the off state, uh, let me just have a look here. Uh, son of commands. Uh, Charlie, do you do you use uh, the son offs with their default firmware, or have you flashed them with uh, Tasmota? I get the screen back up. Uh, there it is. Ah, yes, has I go right. Right, so yeah, do you use Tasmata or is it the uh, the default Sonoffs? Um, I'm guessing if it's the default uh, Sonoff firmware, then you will be using the Ewe Link app. Uh, I have got that installed just because I basically wanted to use. Right, so uh, I'm assuming you can see that Charlie Prathic uh, 
says power on state zero or off uh, command will keep the relays off after uh, after the power comes on. Awesome. Flash Tasm water. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So there's uh, there's your answer for the uh, uh, for the Sonos Charlie. Uh, <laughs> cheers, Prathic. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not something that I use uh, too often. I actually had to uh, reconfigure quite a few of my Sonoffs uh, this weekend, but that was just uh, Wi-Fi. They've uh, they've been set up and uh, in situ, if you like, for uh, for months. And once I've set them up, that's it. I had some experience with the son of commands uh, when I, for example, I've got um, door contacts uh, wired to uh, Sonoffs and uh, on GPIO 14, I believe it is. Yep, yeah, cheers, David. Uh, David said that Sonoffs, has, uh, Sonoffs have uh, got the option for uh, power on state as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, most of the time I've just been using uh, the uh, the retain flag because it's uh, it's not really important for me uh, what the uh, what happens when the power comes on because our power never goes off really. Um, right, so well, um, does that answer your question, Charlie? Uh, are there any lights apart from uh, the Tasmota Sonoffs that uh, that you worried about? If there are, uh, David or Prathic or anybody uh, anybody else might might have them. Uh, I have Hughes. Let me. I was going to look on. Uh, I was going to look on here just to see if I could see a uh, see if I could see a setting that I don't want to transfer. I hate the U bulbs. Uh, I'm actually hoping to uh, hoping to experiment with these the the IKEA uh, trad free bulbs at some point. Um, Yep, for Hughes. Yeah, I'm just looking at uh, the Hughes at the moment. Um, light setup. Uh, basically, because they're because they're dirt cheap. Um, for let's see if my ensuite has got one, two, three uh, GU10 bulbs. Now, here in the UK, that would cost uh, something like. Twenty-one pound, so maybe uh, thirty dollars, and yeah, so that would cost about uh, thirty dollars to um, to refit that, and they could go into a um, a light group component in um, Home Assistant, and then it would just be uh, one switch, one light. But if I was to do that with Philip Hue bulbs, I think uh, I'd be looking at over one hundred pound. Uh, so I had maybe what one sixty dollars or something, something like that to uh, to get three GU ten bulbs. And the price of them is uh, ridiculous. I actually have some uh, some cheap ones but I can't remember the uh, the name of them uh, yeah so I'm just looking on yeah I'm... so does anybody have any ideas on how to uh, on how to control the default state for Philips Hue bulbs I'll just have a quick look on the internet um, yeah so Changing default light state. Right. Right, okay. So, 
Now this post is from 2015, uh, but it does say that uh, although it is in uh, the feature is in high demand, uh, basically no. But I will have another quick look. I'll. Uh, I mean, if I can't find a can't find an answer, then I'll try and find a, a definitive answer uh, after the stream is finished and. Uh, I'll try and get back to you that way, but it's if it hasn't got it, I'd be surprised if it hasn't got it. Uh, here we go. Let's have a look at this. Uh, the problem is it doesn't tell you when these uh, when these were posted. I'm not being rude, I'm just uh, uh, flicking through this, so in essence, I am being rude. Uh, however, I'm sure, <laughs> sure you will understand. Right, ah, right. Uh, what phone do you use, Charlie? Uh, do you use Android or iOS? Uh, all right, let me go back to the go back to the stream. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you use Android or iOS? Uh, the reason I ask is I'm not sure whether you're aware of it, but if you use Android, uh, there's a piece of software called uh, Tasker. I can't believe I didn't think of it. Um, yeah, there's a piece of software called uh, Tasker, and that allows you to do all sorts uh, and there are uh, specific if you like modules plug-in add-ons for a tasker and uh, you hi Jim uh, you could have it set so that uh, when your uh, hue hub comes back online uh, it turns the lights off if they're not already off uh, now, how soon that would kick in? I'm not sure. Um, but there are... I'm um, just trying to think what I'm... Uh, think what I say I got... My thought process got uh, mucked up. Right, so yeah, there's a TAS motor. There are also... Uh, I don't think I've got any installed at the moment, although I did used to have. Uh, there are also, have you looked at the other Hue, app, Hue apps? Uh, for instance, Magic Hue or something like that. I'm not sure whether they would work, but it's uh, it's something to uh, it's something to bear in mind. It's something. Let me let me have a quick look. Yeah, it's something to bear in mind. All right, so Hugh. Uh, so if I've just tapped the microphone. Uh, Hugh Pro. Now, if you're using iOS, I honestly don't have a clue. Um, to be honest, I can't stand iOS. Uh, I can't stand Apple products, so I basically try not to wipe my feet on them because uh, that would be expensive, but don't use them at all. Right, so key features, uh, ba -ba -ba. lighting presets, maybe that would work. Uh, but the thing is, this one costs what? Um, maybe a couple of US dollars. But there are there are loads of different Hue apps, and uh, if you want to try Tasker, Tasker is uh, Tasker is completely free. Uh, there are several Hue plugins for or add-ons for Tasker. Um, and like I said, that would be a uh, a very simple. Uh, not add-on, but that would be uh, a very simple 
a flow, if you like. So once it detects that uh, your Q hub disappears and then comes back, turn the lights off if they're not already off. Or have you used, uh, have you tried Node Red? That could do something similar. Uh, so if it um, basically, if your computer is on all the time, for instance, you could say uh, when the computer comes up, turn the lights off. I mean, you could you could do that in uh, Home Assistant, uh, but I converted all my Home Assistant automations over to Node Red uh, quite a few months ago now, so I'm not sure how it goes at the moment. I know there's uh, there's an improved user interface for the home assistant automations um but uh being a uh, being a former software engineer uh and web developer i prefer to i much prefer to get my hands in the code and uh and find control things so i don't really use the uh the gui the gui editor uh if i can help it Right, so where are we in the uh, where are we in the chat? So what's uh, live chat? Let me just change to that. Yep. So what's happening? Right. So uh, last letter from Charlie was you've got four hue bulbs. Uh, don't know what other options she has for the uh, for the hues. Like I say, if we don't come up with an answer during the live stream, uh, then after it's finished, I'll do a bit of digging. Uh, and I can see your I can see your username. Um, hopefully, you uh, subscribe to Hascasts, which will uh, make it a bit easier for me to uh, find you. Hopefully, I'm not sure whether I can actually get a list of my subscribers. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I can see I can see your username and your uh, your avatar, your picture. So I'll be able to find you, and I'll I'll send you a message with uh, with what I come up with. Uh, now, apart from that, there's a lot of hellos. Hello, everybody. Uh, I think I have covered. Yeah. So right, I was. Uh, I was rambling on about uh, the uh, the series that I had in mind. Now, as there are still people watching, I'll, I'll go back to that, which is uh, my regular shows that are going to be coming up, such as uh, a, a TV show is on a, at a set time, on a set day. Uh, I'm looking at things like that for Hascasts initially, two or three broadcasts uh, a week, different series, so... Uh, yeah, so others were, last one that I said was reviews, uh, another one could be sort of what's, uh, what's happening in the industry, if you're a, if you're a home automation geek, uh, then you may find that interesting. Uh, another series would probably be, uh, something to do with, uh, scripts, uh, I've got the Uh, I've got the uh, the automations series to finish. Um, I was looking at a a dedicated series on live coding. Uh, now that wouldn't be uh, a beginner series by any means. It would be uh, basically going from A to Z, A to A to Z, uh, from start to finish. How, for instance, how to create a Home Assistant uh, component, or how to create an uh, has.io add-on from start all the way through to uh, finish. Now, admittedly, I'm not a Python uh, person, which uh, which is mainly written in, um, but I could I could learn enough uh, to stay one step ahead of the one step uh, ahead of the the lessons the uh, the series, if you like. Uh, so that's that's another thing. Uh, then there's Lovelace. 
Now, for those of you that are not familiar with Lovelace, uh, it's basically a uh, a much more fluid way for uh, things to be written to the screen in uh, Home Assistant. So, normally you're probably aware that uh, if you want to say change a card that's on the uh, on the screen or change the order in which uh, things are, uh, are displayed things like that you need to change it and then uh, if you're old school and uh, you could go in and uh, like change uh, refresh the groups and things like that I just uh, restarted home assistant basically and I think most people did the same from what I can gather but with Lovelace you no longer need to do that uh, because it's all asynchronous and it's all uh, fluidly uh, not fluidly controlled uh, because it's all fluidly written to the uh, to the screen if you like uh, you don't need to restart home assistant uh, there's just a sort of refresh icon in the top right hand corner uh, click that and whatever you have written uh, however you've changed your configuration click the refresh and the new configuration will uh, will be displayed uh, so it's much more simpler to um, to change your views and things like that it's uh, it's a lot not more in depth uh, it's a lot better as well because you can use a lot more things uh, so for an example uh, for myself I'm a big fan of the view.js uh, library and I say it's a library uh, and so if I wanted to I could uh, write the uh, the config that I wanted in uh, in view and then just put the put the wrapper around that uh, and it would bring up the uh, the it would bring up the results now if you're not fam uh, familiar with uh, I'm not sure how we how you want to pronounce it I think Frank Frank is his name Frank is uh, is his uh, username he's done a home assistant uh, it's called the awesome list now just do it a search for it on uh, in fact I'll uh, awesome <laughs> yep here it is so if you're not familiar with uh, Frank's new list or Frank's new list uh, here it is now that is the uh, that's the new awesome list and that's got quite a few Oh, there's the camera that's that's got quite a few lovelace uh, utilities in there such as what people have done with uh, lovelace it really is uh, it really is quite quite good there are uh, different overlays so I know David earlier was asking about CCTV now one thing that uh, there was a, a video out I'm not sure where it is uh, but what it was it was a CCTV picture uh, on the overlay to the CCTV picture there was uh, for instance a if you can imagine an, a normal uh, home assistant light switch the the light bulb and you got different switches just on a little uh, strip at the bottom of the picture and they actually sort of controlled maybe control the light uh, on the drive that sort of thing so the thing some of the things that people have done with it is uh, is quite impressive uh, as it is I haven't had time to get into it yet um, to be honest for the past uh, for the past few weeks um, I've been in uh, too much pain and I've been uh, what day are we on now? I don't know what day are we on now. Uh, Wednesday, and I've been out of morphine since Saturday, so I've basically been a bag of crap. Uh, 
and that's where I've been battling to stay awake today after I got my morphine back. Uh, thanks to my wife upstairs. Thanks, love. Uh, right, so I digress. I always digress. Right, so I've been rambling on. Uh, yes, Jim, you're right. Jim says, uh, sounds like Phillips purposely decided to default them uh, default them on based on on this reddit discussion i think that may be the one that uh, that i was skimming through uh i can't put a link in the chat i don't know why it it may be that it's um detected it as possible spam and it's put it to one side i don't know what that was um yeah and it's put it to one side it may be that i find that later um now yeah so it does I mean, it's uh, it's nearly eight o'clock here, so whatever time, wherever else you are. Um, now, in the uh, I will just say that in the in the Twitter uh, uh, in the tweet that I sent earlier, which was the uh, the advanced warning of this, if you like, uh, I did give uh, British time and. There's that many time zones in America that I just put the uh, the central one down. I wasn't putting all 24 time zones in there. Um, so, yeah, so the two time zones that I will probably... I keep looking at the... Yeah, the two time zones that I will probably carry on giving when I announce live streams are UK and central time in, uh, in America. So... Again, I digress. I think I might uh, change my middle name to digression. Digress, right. Is there anything else anybody uh, wants to talk about? Again, like I said, I can't remember whether my inside leg measurement is 29 or 31. Um, if you definitely want an answer, tough. Anything anybody wants to discuss, talk about? communicate uh, now as for my next video uh, my next video will be uh, part of what this one was meant to be so it will be um, a bit more of a detailed uh, example on how to set up two-factor authentication uh, multi-factor authentication if you like uh, now I know like I said earlier it still is a work in progress uh, you've got to bear in mind that there will be more modules coming I'll let you all know when more modules uh, come out because two seconds I'll wait for the cuckoo clock um, because I imagine there will be things like uh, backup codes uh, coming out. If any of you, if any of you use uh, multi-factor authentication on things like Amazon and Google and um, Trello, things like that, you'll be aware that you have several different layers of um, several different ways of uh, getting into your system. So not just a, a six a uh, six digit uh, character string you have uh, sort of backup codes that you can download uh, you have different phone numbers um, you have uh, text messages that you can receive and I imagine uh, some of these will be will be coming out um, I'll I mean, I only discovered this earlier today, so I will have a look in uh, in GitHub inside the Home Assistant repo. Uh, see if I can see what the plans are. I'll get in the uh, Discord chat and uh, see what I can come up with. Uh, and I'll try and keep you all up to date, but not too up to date that, um, that I give you false information. I hope I haven't given you any false information. Uh, today so right I will say um, 
thank you all for watching if anybody has actually got to this point in the video well done buy yourself a coffee uh, or a beer I'm not sure and I will see you all next time thank you very much